In the heart of the Mediterranean, a hidden island harbors a secret. A secret so profound, it reshapes the very fabric of history. This is Corsica, a place where the destiny of a young boy was etched, igniting a tale of ambition, raw power, and an extraordinary fate destined to conquer nations, a tale waiting to be unveiled. Welcome to Rapid Rewinds. Join us today as we journey back in time, peeling away the layers of history to uncover the enigmatic tale of none other than Napoleon Bonaparte. Before diving into this extraordinary journey make sure to hit that subscribe button and bell icon to not miss out on any new video. Born on the 15th of August in 1769, on the Mediterranean island of Corsica, Napoleon Bonaparte arrived as the second of eight children, welcomed by his parents, Carlo Bonaparte, a lawyer, and Letizia Romolino Bonaparte. Corsica, a land of rugged beauty, had only recently transitioned from Genos rule to French dominion, just a year before Napoleon's birth. Here, the young boy's name underwent a transformation, foreshadowing an extraordinary fate. As a child, Napoleon embarked on an educational journey that would shape his destiny. He studied in mainland France, mastering the French language, and graduated from a prestigious French military academy in 1785. As a second lieutenant in a French artillery regiment, his career took flight. But it was the turbulent times of the French Revolution that would propel him into the spotlight. In 1789, the revolution erupted, leading to the proclamation of a republic within three years. During this tumultuous period, Napoleon found himself aligned with the pro-democracy Jacobins while spending time in Corsica. However, a clash with nationalist Corsican governor Pasquale Paoli in 1793 forced the Bonaparte family to flee their homeland, for mainland France. Here, Napoleon resumed his military duties, setting the stage for the extraordinary journey that lay ahead. Napoleon's military prowess was undeniable. He exhibited unmatched strategy and a keen understanding of warfare. His rise through the ranks was meteoric, earning him the prestigious title of Brigadier General in the army. But as swiftly as fortunes were made, they could crumble just as fast. The fall of Robespierre, culminating in his chilling rendezvous with the guillotine, cast a shadow of suspicion over Napoleon. For a time, he was confined to the confines of house arrest, his future hanging by a thread. However, fate had more in store for this enigmatic figure. In 1795, when Paris trembled under the threat of a royalist uprising against the revolutionary government, Napoleon stepped forward. His courage and strategic prowess proved invaluable in quelling the rebellion, and he was rewarded with a promotion to the rank of Major General. But amidst the chaos of war and politics, Napoleon's personal life also unfolded. In 1796, he married Josephine de Buhanais, a stylish widow six years his senior with two teenage children. However, after failing to have offspring with Josephine, he had their marriage annulled in 1809. In 1810, he wed Marie-Louise, the daughter of the Emperor of Austria. The following year, she gave birth to their son, Napoleon Francois Joseph Charles Bonaparte, who became known as Napoleon II and was given the title King of Rome. In addition to his son with Marie-Louise, Napoleon had several illegitimate children. With the turn of the century, Napoleon ascended to the pinnacle of power. In 1802, a constitutional amendment made him the first consul for life. Two years later, in 1804, he crowned himself Emperor of France in a lavish ceremony at the Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris. He embarked on a mission to restore stability to post-revolutionary France. He centralized the government, instituted reforms in banking and education, and supported science and the arts. One of his most significant accomplishments was the Napoleonic Code, which streamlined the French legal system and continues to form the foundation of French civil law to this day. 
From 1803 to 1815, France was entangled in the Napoleonic Wars, a series of conflicts with various coalitions of European nations. In 1803, Napoleon sold France's Louisiana territory to the United States, a transaction that later became known as the Louisiana Purchase. In 1805, the British wiped out Napoleon's fleet at the Battle of Trafalgar. However, in December of that same year, he achieved one of his greatest victories at the Battle of Austerlitz, defeating the Austrians and Russians. Beginning in 1806, Napoleon initiated the Continental System, a blockade against British trade. In 1807, following his defeat of the Russians at Friedland, the Treaty of Tilsit was signed. In 1809, the French defeated the Austrians at the Battle of Wagram. But as the years passed, cracks appeared in Napoleon's empire. In 1810, Russia withdrew from the continental system, and in 1812, Napoleon led a massive army into Russia. The disastrous retreat from Russia in the face of a merciless winter marked a turning point. Meanwhile, in 1813, the Battle of Leipzig, also known as the Battle of Nations, saw Napoleon's forces defeated by a coalition that included Austrian, Prussian, Russian, and Swedish troops. In April 1814, Napoleon was forced to abdicate the throne and was exiled to Elba, a Mediterranean island off the coast of Italy. But the story didn't end there. On February 26, 1815, less than a year into his exile, Napoleon escaped Elba and returned to France. He began what came to be known as his Hundred Days Campaign, but the world was once again at war. In June 1815, his forces invaded Belgium, but the Battle of Waterloo on June 18, 1815, marked his ultimate defeat. On June 22, 1815, Napoleon was once again forced to abdicate. He was exiled to a remote, British-controlled island, St. Helena, a solitary outpost in the vast South Atlantic Ocean. Here, on this desolate isle, he would spend the remainder of his days. On May 5, 1821, at the age of 51, the enigmatic Napoleon Bonaparte breathed his last breath his vibrant spirit silenced, most likely by the cruel grip of stomach cancer. During his reign, the world had seen him in countless portraits, his hand tucked into his vest, a pose that would later fuel speculation. Had he silently endured years of stomach pain? In his final moments, Napoleon had expressed a wish to rest eternally on the banks of the Seine, among the French people he had loved so much. Yet, his resting place would not be as he had envisioned. He was laid to rest on the distant island, far from the land he had once ruled with an iron will. But time has a way of rewriting stories. In 1840, his remains were returned to the land he loved, France, and found their final resting place in a crypt at Les Invalides in Paris, a hallowed ground where other illustrious French military leaders slumber. And so, the tale of Napoleon Bonaparte, a man whose life was a tapestry of triumph and tragedy, found its conclusion. Yet, his name lives on, etched in the annals of history. Napoleon once said, The reason most people fail instead of succeed is they trade what they want most for what they want at the moment. Thank you for joining us on this captivating journey through the life of Napoleon Bonaparte. We value your feedback and invite you to let us know which historical personalities you'd like to explore next. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for more intriguing stories. Until next time, stay curious.